what's up everyone today I'm sharing the first video on what will hopefully be a series on my latest project which is an Edwardian era dress but today I'm going to be sharing a tutorial on how I made my Edwardian bustle pad before doing a mock-up for any historical era or any kind of costume you really want to know what the undergarments are going to look like um, the Edwardian era is a great example of that because everything is very different. Um, it, everything is padded and shaped very differently than it would be without any proper undergarments. So I've been working on getting that classic Edwardian S-Bend silhouette. Um, I have the corset and then there's some bust padding and a little bit of padding in the hips. Um, but I wasn't happy with the padding in the hip area and so I wanted to add a extra bustle pad on the outside of the corset. This is... You are way too noisy. Um, this is Trish here. She's my, my handy partner. Um, she will be modeling everything for you today so you can see what everything looks like. She's a good friend. So this is my corset with the petticoats before this additional bum pad and I will show a before and after at the end of this video. So here I'm just taking some scrap fabric, these are old curtains, and I'm pinning them along the waist a little bit higher than I want the waistline or top of this to be. I'm just taking a pen and tracing around the waistline and marking out the center back. I'm going around and tracing where I want the bottom to be, just doing my best to keep it symmetrical, but don't worry about that too much here. We'll even that out later. Once I'm done here, I take it off of my form and move it to the table. And cut around with a generous one to two inches around the far edges. I'm going ahead and folding it in half along that center line that I drew on. And then from here, I'm just gonna even everything out and true the pattern. Truing is the process of making it all symmetrical. And because my lines were actually pretty even as they were, I'm just going ahead and eyeing it and cutting it with a half inch seam allowance already in it. So now I'm going to take my pattern paper and just trace the whole thing out. I'm adding my markings to cut on the fold, labeling what it is, and adding the seam allowance that I've included on the pattern. From here I'm going and adding some stitching marks, which I ended up doing at 5 and 3 inches. I went ahead and just eyed the placement and only used the ruler to measure the exact length. So here's what the finished pattern looked like with the markings on it. So next I'm taking my fabric, which is just a plain cotton muslin, and I am folding it so that I can cut it all out at once. This is folded in half and then that in half once more. I'm placing my pattern on, making sure it's all straight with the fold, and cutting. Because of the way that I folded the fabric, I've got both pieces cut at once. You need to have a total of two pieces cut. So next I'm going and stitching around the outer edges. I'm leaving most of the center top on the waistline open so that I can stuff it later. So next I'm going and clipping the corners and clipping along the curved edges. This helps everything lay nice and flat. Next, I'm laying my pattern over top and using a air dissolvable pen to mark my stitching lines. Next, I just stitched along these lines, making sure to backstitch at the beginning and the end. So the next part is the ties. I just used about 15 inches for each side. You can use ribbon, but I used according because I didn't have any ribbon. I knotted off the ends and then stitched them on. Once I was done stitching, I went and trimmed all of the loose threads. Next, it was time to start stuffing. So this was probably the most frustrating process of the whole thing because it's a little difficult getting into all of those small corners and everything. You need a lot less stuffing than you think that you do. Put it on your form, see how that works, and come back. I ended up putting way more than I needed and coming back and pulling stuff out before I stitched it all closed. So play around with it until you find something that you like. After that, I just folded the edges of the opening under and top stitched them down.
and here's what it looks like finished. So you can really see what a difference this makes. It's a very subtle difference, but it's definitely there. Hopefully this video was helpful and maybe you learned something new too. If you'd like to see more videos and help support me, go ahead and hit subscribe and like this video as well. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.